Hi again. How is it possible for one man to bear our sins? Or concludes his discussion of the atonement this way. If going further, we press the question of how Christ in this way bore our sins, what made his endurance of suffering and death an atonement for us or for sin, we have to confess ourselves in presence of a mystery on which only partial light is available. Yet in the larger context of Scripture, certain considerations present themselves which serve as aids to comprehension. As bearing on the possibility of atonement, there is the dignity of Christ's person as Son of God and his actual sinlessness, a lamb without blemish and without spot, according to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. Deeper still, there is Christ's unique relation to our race, formally emphasized, which creates the possibility of a representative relation such as no other could sustain. There is again the organic constitution of our race, which permits of his entrance into it as its new head to redeem it by his obedience and death from the ruin entailed upon it by the disobedience of the first Adam. These are conditions of the possibility of atonement. For the essence of the atonement itself, we must doubtless think of the complete honor which Christ, in our name and nature, standing in the relation to God and to humanity that he did, was able to render to the divine righteousness in his endurance of death for us. Here first is the historical fact that Jesus, in his complete identification with us, did voluntarily enter into the penal conditions of our state as sinners, and at the last into death, the culminating form of these evils, and expression of God's judgment on sin. But this was no mere outward experience for Jesus, no simple fate overtaking him. Christ, in these sufferings, entered, we must believe, as no other could have done, into the whole meaning of the sin of the world before God, and into the whole mind of God in relation to that sin. His sympathy was perfect with both God and man. As representing man, he took the whole burden of the sin of the world upon his heart, palliating nothing, acknowledging all, justifying God in his condemnation of it, passing himself under the, the doom of it, according to 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. Thus he became one with the sinner, to the uttermost point to which love could carry him. In God's adorable wisdom and grace, he was permitted to enter into the whole realization and experience of what death for sin meant, that his atonement might be complete. He was made our sin bearer. There were mysterious elements in Christ's sufferings in the garden and on the cross, which showed that it was not death only as an outward fact which he endured but death with all the darkness and horror, the separation from the comforts of God's presence, which belonged to it as the wages of sin. He tasted death for every man, according to Hebrews 2, verse 9. Entering into his experience, there went up from his innermost soul, in J. McLeod Campbell's expressive phrase, an amen to the judgment of God upon our sin which had in it all the elements of a true and perfect atonement for mankind, and was accepted by God as such. Through his death for us, we live. From what has been said, it will be evident that when the scripture speaks of reconciliation with God, more is meant than simply the reconciliation of man to God, a change of heart and will on man's side. On God's side, also, there were obstacles to forgiveness and fellowship. Though God loved the world, its sin had still to be dealt with. There was a guilt that had to be put away, a wrath that rested on the sinner, according to John verse 36, a condemnation that had to be lifted off, according to Romans chapter 8 verse 1, where it says, there is now no condemnation for those that are in Christ. The work of reconciliation on God's side is accomplished on the cross, the grandest expression of his love. God also is reconciled to the world. We are no more enemies, Romans 5.10 says. What remains is for man to appropriate the reconciliation thus wrought to him, brought to him, and to be himself reconciled to God. That according to 2 Corinthians 5 verse 20. 
So next time, chapter 9, the spirit in salvation. So beyond the atonement, the objective and subjective aspects of the atonement, there is union with Christ and its blessing in the chapter spirit in salvation. Put a link to the gospel of Paul and the apostles compared to the gospel of the watchtower. It's a study of 1 Corinthians 15.